Bronwyn Gallo, and I'm an International Board Certified Lactation Consultant, or IBCLC, and I'm the Lactation Consultant for KIND. And on this part of our breastfeeding education series, we're going to talk about human milk production and how all of that works. There is a hormonal process that takes place when producing human milk. And fun fact, you don't have to have been pregnant in order to produce human milk. Breasts are not sex organs, meaning you don't need them in order to reproduce. Their job is to produce human milk, and so even though being pregnant makes it a little bit easier, you don't need that step in order to produce human milk. But for the sake of this video, we're going to discuss what happens during pregnancy and after pregnancy. Human milk production starts somewhere between the end of the second trimester, beginning of third trimester. This is when the first milk that we produce is formed, and that is called colostrum. Colostrum is what your baby will drink for the first couple of days after delivery. Colostrum is full of fats, proteins, sugars, carbohydrates, and immuno, immunoprotective factors like antivirals, antibodies, and also some gut protection. Parents may notice that they'll start leaking colostrum during pregnancy, but please understand, the absence of leaking of colostrum during pregnancy, or if you are leaking colostrum during pregnancy, does not dictate what your human milk production will be after you have your baby. When you put your baby to your breast, the sucking the baby does, the close contact of the baby, the smell of the baby, all of these things triggers a chain reaction of hormonal responses. The same response can be mimicked with the breast pump. However, some parents still find that they still need to look at pictures of their babies or videos of their babies in order to get things moving quickly. So once baby goes to the breast, that suckling triggers the hypothalamus to start talking to other organs to start producing hormones. This triggers your posterior pituitary gland to release oxytocin. We all know oxytocin as the love hormone, but it's also a key factor in labor. It's the hormone that causes your contractions so that you can meet your little bundle of joy. So once the oxytocin is released, this causes your milk ducts to contract and kind of push that milk to the baby. Once this oxytocin releases, also triggers the anterior pituitary gland to start releasing the prolactin. Prolactin is the hormone that we need for breast milk production. It tells the body to start making more milk for future feeds and also for the current feed that is taking place. This process is called the milk ejection reflex or let down as we're used to seeing it. This whole process takes about 30 seconds or less. Sometimes, if this process takes a little bit longer than normal, your lactation consultant may have you ask your doctor for some additional hormonal tests just to make sure things are in order. With the production of colostrum and once it transitions to your mature milk, it's very important that you nurse or pump very frequently. As long as everything is going well and there's no underlining conditions, human milk production runs on a negative loop feedback, meaning that the more stimulation the breasts get, the more empty the breasts are, the more breast milk they're produced. The more full the breasts are and full for a long duration of time, this tells your body not to produce any human milk. So if you want to continue with production of human milk, then it's best to nurse frequently or if you're choosing to pump or away from your baby to pump frequently. If you want to suppress lactation or not to produce as much uh, human milk um, or to slow things down a bit, having your breast stay full for longer will definitely do that for you. Thank you for tuning in to this part of our breastfeeding educational series. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at lc at kind .com. Thank you.